In a field outside Moscow, there's a graveyard of Soviet aviation. It is filled with MiGs, Sukhoi, and Tupolevs. But in the back corner, sitting in the tall grass, lies a machine that defies explanation. It looks like a spaceship from Star Wars that crashed in a Russian swamp. It has no wings. Its engines are mounted on top. It looks clumsy, heavy, and dead. But fifty years ago, this rotting hulk was the most advanced machine in the Soviet Union. It was designed to take off vertically like a helicopter, fly at high speed like a jet, and skim the ocean surface like a boat. Welcome to Shadow Works. Today we open the file on the VV, A-14, the monster that was designed to hunt American submarines, but ended up hunting for its own identity. To understand this machine, you have to understand its creator, Robert Bartini. He wasn't Russian. He was an Italian aristocrat, a literal baron, who became a communist, defected to the Soviet Union in 1923, and became one of their top aircraft designers. They called him the Red Baron. Bartini was a genius, but he was also crazy. He didn't believe in planes. He believed in transport vehicles that used the entire planet as an airfield. In the 1960s, the Soviet Union had a problem. U.S. Polaris submarines were lurking in the oceans, ready to launch nukes. The Soviets needed a hunter. Bartini proposed a radical solution, a vehicle that could land on water, take off vertically to hunt, and fly fast to the next target. He called it the VV-014. The design was insane. It was a catamaran with a pot in the middle. To take off vertically, it needed 12 jet engines buried in the belly, blasting downward. To fly forward, it had two massive turbofans mounted on the back. But the weirdest part? The landing gear. Bartini didn't want heavy metal floats. So he designed inflatable rubber pontoons. Imagine landing a 50-ton aircraft on giant balloons. It sounded ridiculous, but when they tested it in 1972, it actually worked. The rubber pontoons absorbed the waves perfectly. The beast could float. It could fly. It looked like the future. But there was a catch. The battery of 12 vertical lift engines? They were never delivered. The engine factory couldn't build them reliable enough. Without them, the VVA-14 couldn't take off vertically. It was a VTOL plane with no VTOL, so they bolted on temporary wheels and flew it like a normal plane. It worked, but it was slow. They tried to use it as an Ekranoplan, a ground-effect 